There's a bit of confusion floating around about what on earth this is. Is it the Model 2? Is it a robo-taxi? Just how old is this photo anyway? And is Tesla really building a three-wheeler? We now know that there will be two future Tesla models, a dedicated self-driving robo-taxi and a smaller compact Model 2. Even though it's not going to be called the Model 2, I'm going to call it that until it's been given a name. Both vehicles will be built on Tesla's third generation platform. The S and X sit on the first chassis platform and the Model 3 and the Y sit on the second generation platform. Now originally, the plan was to build these at Giga Mexico, which is still yet to break ground. But we've since found out that Giga Texas is already tooling up a production line for these future vehicles, due to Elon realising it might be a bit of a stretch to ask his best engineers to go and live in Mexico for a year whilst ramping up entirely new production lines. It makes far more sense to build the new revolutionary production line in Texas and copy and paste that onto other factory locations around the world, once production hell version 7 is complete. After being somewhat disappointed by the lack of progress at Giga Mexico, I now realise that this new plan will actually accelerate the release of Robotaxis and Model 2s, as the factory they will be built in is already built! Marvellous! But before we look at these models in a bit more depth, I want to share how they both came about. Thanks to Walter Isaacson's amazing new biography on Elon Musk, I highly recommend reading it, obviously, we learn in one chapter of Elon's determination to skip the Model 2 entirely and go straight to producing a dedicated driverless vehicle. With his optimism for solving autonomy hopefully aligning with reality of mass producing robo taxes. That's just how confident he was in solving autonomy. Yes, it's taken much longer than expected. Yes, Elon said it's going to be solved for nine years in a row now. But it is, as he put it, possibly the most difficult problem to solve. And of course, everything is theoretically impossible until it's done. Thankfully though, enough Tesla executives managed to persuade Elon to pursue both a fully autonomous dedicated robo-taxi and a smaller compact $25,000 Model 2, which would be a mass market affordable Tesla and an ultimate smackdown to anything else at that price point. Perfect for Europe, China and right at home in America for those not needing such a large car. I'll happily go on record and say that the Model 2 will be the last new car that we see from Tesla that comes with a steering wheel or pedals. Blind optimism or on the money? Let me know in the comments below. And whilst you're there, feel free to like and subscribe to support my little channel. Thank you so much. Reacting to seeing both the compact and the robo-taxi prototype designs, Elon commented that they both look like something from the future. Great! I'm excited to usher in a less boring and more inspiring future, where we finally get to see our civilization flourish into a sustainable electric economy, alongside revolutionary electric transportation. And unfortunately, I don't see any other car companies other than Tesla aiming at such a radical, exciting leap in electric vehicle designs. Unless that exciting leap happens to look like these. Ugh. On the Q3 2023 earnings conference call, Elon said regarding the Model 2, it will swiftly exceed the production of all our other vehicles combined. That's due to a far quicker manufacturing process. And it's only a matter of time before they drive themselves off the factory floor, load themselves onto ships and drive to your front door. And yes, I know that sounds bonkers. So thanks to autonomy taking a little longer to crack, the Model 2 will exist, and we can look forward to just a bit more time driving with steering wheels, whilst no doubt having the option to drive fully autonomously when needed. The best of both worlds if you ask me. If you want to hear more about the Model 2, click the card in the corner for my video about that. But don't go yet, this is the really exciting bit. Robotaxi! If you think the Cybertruck looks unique, futuristic and a slap in the face to traditional trucks, we can expect the same radical styling, ultra-modern, pioneering design language for the Robotaxi. But that doesn't mean looking Cybertrucky. no no no, just the same sort of revolutionary, shocking sight of that of a Cybertruck. But just like the Cybertruck's unique design, its looks being the result of its engineering genius, I imagine so too will be the Robotaxi. Its form will follow its key functionality, more on this in a sec. Now, this image of Franz von Holzhauden, Franz von Holzhauden, von Holz, Franz von, Franz von Holzhauden, Franz von Holzhausen, this image of Franz von Holzhauden stood in front of a wooden prototype has had a few people assuming that this will be the Robotaxi design. I'm sceptical on this, it just doesn't seem that practical or scalable to me. Although undoubtedly futuristic, and it is described in the book as Robotaxi concept, this could be just one of many designs, and is actually taken from a section in the book that introduced Autopilot and Musk's life between 2014 and 2016. Therefore, it could be a very early concept. Franz does look a little younger here too. But if this robo-taxi concept is that old, this design predates the Cybertruck, which is kind of cool as the front end does show hints of Cybertruck, does it not? But going back to its design, these pictures on the wall show what it would look like and are pretty accurate to this prototype. 
It has just two seats, obviously no steering wheel or pedals, and what looks like three wheels here, although not here. It also has butterfly doors, which most certainly look cool, but would be a strange choice as it adds complexity to production, something which is unnecessary and expensive, which doesn't fit Tesla's plan to churn out millions of these quickly and cheaply, does it? Plus the idea of crawling in and out of a low slung car doesn't make much sense either. You just have to pull yourself out. <laughs> Standard doors might be more suitable. Consider a London black cab for ease of getting in and out with a spacious interior. Far more practical. And does anybody really care about what they look like on the outside when you won't actually own one? I do think something more like this to be closer to the mark. A two-seater does make sense though as most ride-hailing trips only involve one or two people. More people, more robo-taxis. Or here's some of my speculation on robo-taxi requirements. What would it have to be? As I've already predicted in previous videos, there could be a variety of configurations that sit on top of this new Generation 3 platform. A two-seater, a six-seater, a van. It makes sense to offer various configurations depending on the customer's needs. And of course, as they are autonomous, they could easily daisy-chain together and offer enough occupancy for anyone's needs. Could this modular design feature be what Franz von Holzhausen was referring to when he was asked if Cybertruck was his favourite design? As he replied, no, it was the car he's not allowed to talk about that was. I think that was the robo-taxi and the multiple configurations of it. Back to robo-taxi requirements. Performance-wise, it certainly won't need ludicrous mode, will it? A nice relaxed ride would be perfect and give greater efficiencies too. A three to 400 mile range would be more than adequate for the vast majority of trips. Although again, battery sizes could vary too, depending on the journey time and the type of taxi needed. Autonomous robo-taxis would have to park themselves and charge up when necessary. I'd guess wireless charging would be in place in time for robo-taxis. Tesla has already teased us with this image during Investor Day. Park over it, charge. Easy peasy. Although I'm not sure of maximum charging speeds with induction charging. I'd assume charging locations for robo-taxis would be totally independent of superchargers and would be built up alongside the production ramp-up. Going back to this for a second though, what makes this product special isn't the wireless aspect, but the automated charging solution. Perfect for robo-taxis and great for owners too. You'll never have to decide when to plug your vehicle in or forget to do so. You'll simply park over it and the vehicle will decide on when it needs to charge. Deleting parts and processes really is at the core of Tesla's mission. And let's not forget the fun aspect. As Tesla puts it regarding their future products, they can't forget to do cool sh stuff. A robo-taxi needs to be tough enough to handle over a million miles of wear and tear. For this reason, stainless steel makes a lot of sense. Given SpaceX has developed its own alloy of stainless steel for Starship, plus the lessons they'll be learning from ramping up Cybertruck production, stainless steel does seem to be the material of choice here. In fact, Elon loves stainless steel so much he's been quoted as saying he and stainless steel should get a room. Ah. If Tesla were to build millions of these a year, doing so without the expense or complications of a paint shop would certainly speed up production to the ludicrous levels necessary to reach something like 5 to 10 million of these per year. On the Q3 2022 earnings conference call, Elon said regarding the upcoming vehicle, it will swiftly exceed the production of all of our other vehicles combined. These should indeed, as Elon has alluded to in the past, be sprinting off the production line rather than crawling. As this design suggests, could Tesla Robotaxi have just three wheels? They do like deleting parts after all, but you know, weather. You don't want to get stuck in an inch of snow, and you don't really want instability either. Four wheels are most certainly better than three, no matter which way round they go. And finally, could Tesla's already patented single piece casting come to fruition? This gigantic casting machine would have to be something like twice or three times the power of the Cybertruck's 9,000 ton stamping pressure. Just imagine watching that beast in action. Can you also imagine a control room of sorts watching Tesla taxis someday, millions of them around the world communicating with each other, stopping to charge, endlessly buzzing around our roads and giving people the safety, comfort and inexpensive form of travel that would give people back their freedom from the drudgery of commuting and travelling. More time to concentrate on work, play games, enjoy a film. My God, it'll be beautiful. That doesn't seem appropriate. Let me find a better clip. Roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. OK, we do still need roads, but you get my point. The future would finally become futuristic. Competition is coming. Meanwhile, where are legacy automakers? 
as Volkswagen struggles on trying to transition to EVs amidst a third of a trillion dollars of debt, Toyota still remaining as stubborn as ever towards EVs and thinking ICE cars and hydrogen are still the future for cars, and Ford, General Motors and Stellantis currently being held hostage by the union striking, who are demanding a 40% pay increase while simultaneously demanding less working hours, all being led to redundancy thanks to this guy, Sean Fain who had the gall to say workers shouldn't accept lower wages so greedy people like Elon Musk can build more rocket ships. For a start, what's Elon got to do with these other companies' pay packets? Well done for cramming in that virtue-signalling, unrelated, emotion-triggering nonsense. These strikes will do nothing but accelerate these companies towards bankruptcy even sooner, and I really feel for those hundreds of thousands of employees who are about to lose their jobs thanks partly to incompetent leadership, and now also thanks to union leaders that are meant to be keeping job security, not accelerating companies towards bankruptcy with their unrealistic demands. Anyway, here's the strange realisation then. Robotaxis would be the first mass-produced cars not for sale to the general public. Tesla would build, own and operate their own fleet of self-driving taxis all around the world. What does that mean for Tesla's profits in the future? Well, finances start to look beyond ludicrous very quickly when considering the... Blah, 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 blah. Hello. Hello! I'm just recording! Hello. Tesla would build, own and operate their own fleet of self-driving taxis all around the world. What does that mean for Tesla's profits in the future? Well, finances start to look beyond ludicrous very quickly when considering the implications of this. Not only industry-leading profits from their ongoing sexy car sales, profits from software as a service such as full self-driving subscriptions, profits from its battery energy storage and auto bidder software that runs it, Profit from the world's largest supercharger network. I could go on, but the point here is that if Tesla execute their plan of reaching a 20 million vehicle production run rate a year, it's the Model 2 and the RoboTaxi that gets them there. Low cost, easier and quicker to manufacture, and a profit revenue stream that would quite frankly be ridiculous. If only there was a way to invest in such a company. <sighs> so, do you think RoboTaxis will be a good solution for those people not needing or wanting to own a car? If your own Tesla woke up to an update that made it capable of joining the robo-taxi network, would you do it? Or have you just sat through this entire video in amazement at my naivety and optimism? Either way, I'd love to hear your comments below. I do read them all and respond to the ones I understand. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and definitely check out these other videos. I've done loads on my little YouTube channel now. There's bound to be something there to float your boat. Thanks very much. Bye for now.